Obesity is a growing global concern. While most of us fret about an extra kilo, for others, their struggle with weight is in an entirely different league. Sometimes it is nearly impossible to curb their eating addiction. Obesity puts people at higher risk for many lethal diseases. Here is the list of the most overweight people in the world. Juan Pedro Franco In a short film made by Natasha Pizzi Slurgit for the BBC, Franco explains that following a car accident at the age of 17, half of his body was broken and he never fully recovered. However, doctors remain baffled as to why he gained so much weight. Since then, Franco has developed diabetes, high blood pressure, and hypothyroidism. The 33-year-old insists that he has tried everything to shift the pounds, but after years with no success, he is finally getting surgical help. One year ago, Franco moved several hours from his home to be closer to doctors and managed to lose a third of his body weight under their guidance. Having been rejected by a number of doctors, he now has a team of 30 professionals helping him for free. Franco has since undergone a two-part gastric bypass which involves dividing the intestine into two parts, one which will be able to absorb nutrients and another that can't. The operation should mean Franco only absorbs about 40 to 50 percent of the calories he eats. Recovering well, doctors hope that he will get down to around 120 kilograms in the coming months. Ashley Dunn Brackner Ashley Dunbrachter turned to food as a coping mechanism and a source of happiness when she was very young. Her unstable home life caused her to gain a lot of weight. She was already 250 pounds by 6th grade and weighed 400 pounds when she graduated high school. She continued gaining weight while happily married to her husband Jacob, and despite losing 95 pounds after the birth of their son Patrick, she fell back into old habits and continued gaining weight. Fortunately, she proved herself to Dr. Yuyan Nawazandran, and she received gastric bypass surgery to help her new weight loss journey. But she knows how important it is to put in the hard work necessary. Whoever says weight loss surgery is the easy way out is crazy, because this has been one of the hardest things she has ever done. The surgery is just a tool. It does not change your mindset, she explained. Ashley lost 350 pounds, over 48% of her body weight. During the two years of filming the show, her star chasm, she's happy that she no longer has to burden her son to help. Octavia Gahangas She is one of the fattest people in the world. By the time Octavia Gahangas is 20 years old, she weighed over 500 pounds. Sadly, just three years later, Octavia's mother passed away. This leaves her to take care of her sister Desiree. However, Desiree eventually marries and leaves home. At this point, Octavia tips the scales around 700 pounds. Luckily, it seems that things turn around for Octavia at this point. She ends up seeing renowned weight loss doctor Yunan Nauzarandan at his clinic in Houston, Texas. With the help of Dr. Now and her own self-motivation and dedication, Octavia loses a remarkable 236 pounds. This brings her weight down to 456 pounds. Luckily for fans wondering what Octavia is up to now, her Facebook is public. Not only has that, but she regularly posts updates for her fans to see. It seems that when she appeared on TLC My 600 Pound, The Life, she took to heart that she is a public figure. She even calls herself such in her Facebook bio. Her Facebook timeline is a series of before and after photos, motivational posts, how to lose weight, and promotions for her business. Arya Permana the youngest, from a small village in West Java, Indonesia, first went viral years ago when he weighed more than 280 pounds, aged 9. This fattest kid in the world was so big could not wash normally, so he bathed in a pool outside. His massive frame also meant that he could go to school, but he got out of breath walking a few steps. No clothes fit him, so wrapped himself in a sarong and spent his days constantly munching on junk food, including his favorite, instant noodles. But with a closely watched diet and regular exercise, plus a gastric band operation, Arya shed a remarkable 231 pounds in three years. He now walks three kilometers a day, plays basketball and other sports, can climb trees and ride a motorcycle for the first time, and have a keto diet followed by keto recipes. Delighted Arya was also able to return to school before it shut because of coronavirus. He could chomp down rice, fish curry, beef, vegetable soup, and tempeh, a traditional soy patty, enough to feed two adults for a whole day. 
While he managed to lose 20 pounds in four months after dietitians put him on a diet plan for fat loss consisting of fruits and vegetables and a daily walk, exercise, and swimming, Aria was still far from reducing the required weight. Drew Stewart Drew Stewart hasn't weighed himself in 10 years, but he wears a size 18X t-shirt. Although he hopes to be a candidate for losing weight surgery, he is worried about what the scale will say during his weigh-in at his upcoming doctor's visit. His morbid obesity is a health problem that is putting him in danger of becoming bedridden, like his 49-year-old cousin, Chakota Light, who weighs 680 pounds and hasn't left her home in three years. Even though it hurts him to walk, he still has to do it. It's not even an option for him to not be mobile because people depend on him, he explained. Looking back on his childhood, this fat person was a normal kid who rode bikes, swam, and played basketball. Drew believes the weight really started piling on when he moved to Atlanta to care for his mom after she got sick. Drew really wants to be a candidate for weight loss surgery, and he is excited to have an appointment with Dr. Proctor and start his weight loss journey. Chitoka Light A dangerously obese woman whose near 680-pound frame left her bed bound has managed to drop almost 100 pounds after undergoing weight loss surgery. Chitoka Light has been petrified to go through with the operation after learning of the physical and emotional risks involved in going under the knife. And it was only after she began working with a trainer and managed to get out of her bed and walk that surgeons would even approve Chitoka, who was previously described herself as being encased in a flesh prison as a candidate for the procedure. It had given her the freedom to be in her home alone without needing somebody at hand to help her for the first time in years. During the episode, Chitoka stressed how she was ready to be self-reliant and independent, but acknowledged that, thanks to her support system at home, she didn't have to face the surgery alone. Their happiness for her was evident when she was helped outside the hospital, to find her family cheering and holding up signs of congratulations. Chitoka was bed-bound for three years and didn't leave her house until she started working with a personal trainer. Diana Bunch Diana Bunch was also one of the cast members of My 600 Pound Life. She was the oldest featured patient on the show. Fans now wonder what happened to Diana. She was 601 pounds at the age of 55. Fans have seen even heavier patients than Diana in the show. However, her situation was critical because of her age. Obesity becomes risky for your life once you grow old. Indeed, Diana had to face several problems. Diana's pain was the constant visitor in her life. She was not able to lead her normal day-to-day -day life. Meanwhile, the main problem in her body was her legs. Diana suffered from lymphedema. She was unable to move around and had difficulty in even maintaining hygiene. That was the moment when Diana thought it's better to hurry to a doctor than die. Diana was not ready to give up some of her favorite foods as well. She loved to eat peanut butter cups, although that was something forbidden by Dr. Now. Therefore, Diana had to make a decision between her favorite food and life. But by the end, she was successful in achieving the benchmark for the surgery. Charity Pierce She started her career with reality shows as one of the heaviest women in the world. She was very depressed about her weight, also she stated that she would rather die than live there this way. She weighed in at nearly 800 pounds. She suffered from flesh-eating bacteria, even she can't carry out the day-to-day -day tasks without the help of her family. While struggling with her weight loss, she also whited for her daughter. Also, her mother passed away because of brain cancer and her fiancé cheated on her with her own sister. With all of this struggle, Charity's journey was most challenging. With the help of Dr. Now and gastric bypass surgery, she lost over 400 pounds. And after that, she emails a documentary on her weight loss. Charlie was inspired by her mother and she lost 95 pounds as well. Her fat loss includes keto meal, which made her from the fattest person in the world to an amazing normal lady. Charity Pierce is so strong and she proved herself by losing weight. Her journey was a real inspiration for everyone. And she proved that she is strong enough to overcome any life's difficulties. Keith Martin He was one of the most overweight people in the world. Keith Martin, who died from pneumonia, had been bedbound, unable to walk, and at one point had not left his North London home for a decade. Sadly, it was just eight months after Keith, who weighed 70 stone at its heaviest, had undergone a successful gastric sleeve that removed three quarters of his stomach. Mr. Martin admitted he knew he was killing himself by consuming 20,000 calories a day, almost 10 times the recommended amount for an adult. 
He was morbidly obese. He had six egg fry-ups for breakfast, then pizza, kebabs, Chinese takeaways, and Big Macs for lunch and dinner, all washed down with six pints of coffee and two liters of fizzy drinks. If he had lived, he would have lost hundreds of pounds and regained his ability to walk and live a normal life. According to Mr. Manor, who supports new NHS guidelines which encourage doctors to suggest weight loss surgery for anyone with a BMI higher than 30 and type 2 diabetes. Unemployed Keith admitted much of the weight had come from fat eating huge amounts of super cheap fast food. Sean Milliken Sean, who weighed more than a thousand pounds at his heaviest, died of complications from an infection that led to a heart attack. He was having problems with his breathing. They were able to resuscitate him, and a short later, his heart stopped. His life has been honored in an episode of My 600 Pound Life. He died in the middle of filming for the second episode of the follow-up show. Sean first appeared on the show in 2016 and weighed more than 900 pounds. His initial weight of 919 pounds was the highest the show had ever depicted. But Sean's weight actually fluctuated greatly during his time on the show, at one breaking point peaking at 1,003 pounds. He attributed his early weight problems to a difficult relationship with his dad, as well as his parents' divorce when he was just 10. By the time the separation was finalized, Sean already weighed 150 pounds. Sean initially managed to lose weight over 400 pounds while on the show, but his mom continued to feed him unhealthy food and even told him to ignore his doctor's instructions. His weight loss journey was also affected by his mom Renee's death from kidney failure in 2017. Rosalie Bradford Rosalie Bradford, who held records for being the world's heaviest woman and for losing the most weight, is actually no more with us. She weighed 1,050 pounds in January 1987, according to the 1994 Guinness Book of World Records. She lost 736 pounds to weighing 314 in September 1992, according to the book. Bradford weighed about 400 pounds just before dying. Radford had spent the last year bedridden with complications from having her lymph nodes severed years ago. Simmons sent her a diet plan, focusing first on controlling what she ate for breakfast and encouraged her to exercise. It was a slow process. By 1992, she was just over 300 pounds. She went back to school and earned a degree in psychology from Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and toured the country giving motivational speeches at weight loss seminars. She is survived by her husband and son. Patrick Duell. A Nebraska man is known around the world as the Half-Ton Man. Patrick Duell brought his battle with weight to the small screen as the subject of TLC's documentary. Duell was literally eating himself to death. At that time, he weighed in at 1,072 pounds. He hadn't left his bedroom in Valentin, Nebraska in seven months. Cruz had to knock down a wall and drive a special ambulance in from Denver to take him to a South Dakota hospital for gastric bypass surgery. A year later, Patrick weighed 570 pounds and went to lose another 200 at home. When the documentary aired, nearly 5 million people tuned in. Duel doesn't regret doing the show and hopefully has helped others who are overweight get medical attention. They don't get the help they need because people can make fun of them and just run them into the ground. According to him, the first thing people who want to lose weight should do is sit down with their doctor and contact a dietitian to find out how their body reacts to certain foods. Walter Hudson Nearly all of the thousand people who showed up at the Long Island Church near Hudson's Hempstead home had learned of him only after he became stuck in his bedroom doorway in 1987 and needed rescue workers to get him out. At 5'10", he weighed 1,400 pounds before changing his diet and starting to exercise. He was once listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the heaviest man alive. But he is lucky because Hudson's fiance mentioned that his love for her made her feel blessed. Before the service, hundreds of people lined up to view the open coffin where Hudson rested in a purple robe surrounded by white satin. Dozens of people took pictures. Afterward, the closed coffin was rolled on a metal dolly out of the church by eight pallbearers. The dolly was attached to the back of a hearse and pulled for an hour through the streets of Hempstead, past City Hall, and past the house whose front door he walked out of in 1988 for the first time in 18 years. He never ventured beyond the yard. Iman Ahmed Abdullahi. Iman Ahmed Abdullahi was an Egyptian considered to be the heaviest living woman in the world and the second heaviest woman in history. 
Her family had stated that she weighed five kilograms at birth. Suffering from a thyroid problem, she had to stop school. She lived in Alexandria. In February 2017, Abdullahi traveled to India Safi Hospital, where a group of doctors headed by Musfal Ladwaka treated her successfully using bariatric surgery. They included an endocrinologist, a chest physician, a cardiologist, a cardiac surgeon, two bariatric surgeons, two intensivists, and three anesthetists. She remained in Mumbai after the operation for several months. The aim was to perform two operations and during the next three and a half years reduce her weight to less than 100 kilograms. She lost about 325 kilograms after undergoing weight loss treatment in India. She left on the 4th of May 2017 for the United Arab Emirates for a long-term treatment. She was also suffering from a cardiac issue and infected bed sores. She was being treated by a team of 20 doctors at Abu Dhabi's Burjil Hospital. Later on, she died in 2017. Carol Yeager Carol Ann Yeager was an American woman who was the heaviest woman ever recorded and one of the most severely obese people in history. Yeager lost the most weight by non-surgical means in the shortest documented time, 521 pounds in three months. Yeager suffered from many other obesity-related health problems as well, including breathing difficulty, a dangerously high blood sugar level, and stress on her heart and other organs. As is common with many severely obese patients, Yeager was not able to stand or walk because her muscles were not strong enough to support her, due in part to muscle atrophy from disuse. Yeager was hospitalized 13 times in two years, according to Beecher Fire Department Chief Benny Zappa. Each trip required as many as 15 to 20 firefighters from two stations to assist paramedics to convey Yeager to the ambulance in a relay fashion. One team inside the house would pass her through the doorway to another team on the outside, who would pass her to another team inside the ambulance, where she would ride on the floor. Each trip cost the township up to $450 per station. Yeager died in 1994. Yeager was buried privately, with about 90 friends and family members attending memorial services. Manuel Uribe Manuel Uribe Garza was a Mexican man who suffered from a morbid obesity to one of the greatest extents known in recorded history. After reaching a peak weight of around 600 kilograms and having been unable to leave his bed since 2002, he lost approximately 230 kilograms over one-third of his body weight, with the help of doctors and nutritionists by February 2008. However, he died in his hometown weighing 394 kilograms. Uribe drew worldwide attention in January 2006 when he made an emotional plea on a Mexican television network that prompted both private and public assistance. He was also featured on The World's Heaviest Man, a 2007 television documentary about his bedridden life and attempts to overcome his obesity, and in The World's Heaviest Man Gets Married, a similar documentary that was broadcast in 2009 by the Discovery Channel. Uribe was hospitalized after suffering severe cardiac arrhythmias and liver failure. He died in 2014 at the age 48 from liver failure. Donna Simpson How to lose weight fast? One of the easiest ways is the keto meal plan. But this plan is not acceptable for the most overweight fat people in the world. She is one of the unusual people. Miss Simpson, who wears XXXXXXXL dresses, eats whole cakes and bags of donuts and tries to move as little as possible. Her fans wanted her to become as large as possible and she quickly became a star in a bizarre fantasy fetish community that worshipped the overweight and brought pizzas to her to munch on. She never followed any weight loss diets for women. But life is changing for Donna Simpson. The 600-pound mother of two moved from New Jersey to Akron, Ohio after her five-year relationship with fiancé Felipe Gawamba. The 5-foot-4-inch woman, who has also turned away from the fantasy world, replacing videos of her eating with a blog about her journey to health. Ms. Simpson has already lost 85 pounds on her long road to weight loss. One man from Germany sent her a credit card with specific instructions for buying pizzas, Chinese food, and other takeaways as he wanted her to use his money to become as large as possible. Miss Simpson had a website where men paid $19 a month to watch her eat and she flew around the world for events. She hopes to join a gym soon to begin walking in a pool and has modified her eating. Miss Simpson has struggled to lose weight for years and weighed about 200 pounds at school in Summit County, Ohio. Paul Jonathan Mason 
He is the world's former heaviest man, weighing in at 70 stone, 444.5 kilograms at his peak. He is the heaviest recorded person in the United Kingdom. Paul began binge eating in his 20s as a form of emotional detachment from issues that started in his childhood, including child abuse. After numerous attempts to get his weight back on track, he revealed that he gained an extra 20 pounds during the coronavirus lockdown. Mason is now living alone in sheltered housing in Plymouth, where he has access to round-the-clock care. His lowest moment of the pandemic was being hoisted out of his flat in a sling by paramedics. In 2014, Mason weighed 140 kilograms, or 22 stone, a total weight loss of 304 kilograms, almost 48 stone. Though he mentioned that he hates living the way he is, but he is hoping things get better in the new year when he can access to more treatment. Paul hopes that his documentary, The World's Fattest Man, 10 Years On, will help other people on the same journey before it's too late. Katrina Rayford Katrina Rayford once had the unfortunate title of being the world's fattest woman. But after a diet and exercise overhaul, the 40-year-old from Florida has lost a staggering 570 pounds in weight. Now a regular at her local gym, Katrina is even trying her luck with love. She has joined dating app Tinder and in a bid to find romance. Katrina admits she would previously catfish men by using photos of slimmer women to trick them into talking to her online. Katrina's newfound lease of life is a world away from where she was in 2002. She hit the headlines after the side of her home was bulldozed away because her thousand pound frame left her bed bound. After shedding 576 pounds, she is now a shadow of her former self. Now Katrina's out on the dating scene, she is constantly asked by suitors how she managed to shed the pounds. They ask her for tips for her sisters, aunts, and mums, she laughed. Still, it's amazing to think that a few years ago she couldn't move and now she's dating. She now plans to lose even more weight and is eager to have 140 pounds of sagging skin cut off. Kenneth Brumley Kenneth Brumley is one of the fattest people ever recorded, whose weight was confirmed. He was featured on the Channel 4 Body Shock documentary, Half Ton Dad, as a father of four who weighed 1,033 pounds. As a child, Brumley played basketball, baseball, and American football, which kept his weight average. But after a move to California at age 19, he stopped playing and the weight began to accumulate. At his heaviest, Brumley had a daily caloric intake of approximately 30,000 calories. According to Kenneth Brumley's statements in the documentary, he had been bedbound for 15 years. After he was accepted as a gastric bypass patient at the Renaissance Hospital in Houston, a fire crew had to hammer down a wall in Brumley's house to get him out. At Renaissance Hospital, Brumley was treated by the specialist team that treated Renee Williams, believed to have been the world's heaviest woman at the time. The first step in Brumley's treatment was a diet restricted to 1,200 calories per day, which made him lose 167.5 pounds in only 40 days. Who shocked you the most? Do you know anyone like this? Let us know in the comments section. Like always, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take care of yourself.